Hi everyone, welcome back to our statistics tutorial series. In the last tutorial, we learned how to organize numerical data. There, we learned how to find the number of classes and how to find the class rate. But in this tutorial, we are going to look at how to find the class boundary, midpoint, relative frequency, and co. Okay, so without wasting much time, let's start and let's take our previous organized table, which is this one. Okay. I've removed the tally side. Our focus is going to be on what we'll be doing now. Now, the first thing we'll be creating is class boundary. So let's create a column for that. So we title this place class boundary. Now, pay attention. To find class boundary, we need a particular value. Okay, that value is called class boundaries adjustment or class boundaries correction. That's the name of that value. We need that value to deduct. From the lower class limit and add it to the upper class limit. Are you with me? It's just like robbing Peter to pay Paul. So what we want to do to create the class boundary is to rob Peter to pay Paul. So the lower class limit is Peter and the upper class limit is Paul. Now we need to know the amount we'll be robbing from Peter and giving to Paul. And remember, I said that amount or value is called class boundaries adjustment or class boundaries correction okay now to find a class boundaries correction this is what we'll do we can take the lower class limit of the second class which is this minus the upper class limit of the first class okay which is this then we divide it by two we'll be able to get the class boundaries correction okay so to do that we'll have 44 minus 43 that will give you 1. Divide by 2, you get 0 0.5. So this is the value we will be rubbing from Peter and giving to Paul. Okay. It is called class boundaries correction or class boundaries adjustment. Okay. So to get a first class boundary, this is what we will do. We will take this 36, okay, minus the 0 0.5. What do we get? We get 35.5. So we write it here. 2, okay, 2. Then that 0 0.5 will be deducted from the lower class, which is theta. We will now add it to 4. Okay. So when we add the 0 0.5 to this 43, we will get what? 43.5. Then we go to the next one and do the same. 44 minus 0 0.5 will give us what? 43.5. Then 2. This is not minus. Okay. It means 2. 2. Then we add that 0 0.5 to this 51. That will give us 51.5. Then we go to the next. 52 minus 0 0.5 will give us what? 51.5. 2. Then we add it to this 59. We get what? 59.5. Then we do that to this place also. 60 minus 0 0.5 will give us what? 59.5. 2. 67 plus 0 0.5 will give us 67.5. Then we go to the next one. 68 minus 0 0.5 is 67.5. 2. Then we add to the upper upper limit okay to get the upper class boundary so 75 plus 0 0.5 will give us 75.5 then we go to the next one 76 minus 0 0.5 will give us 75.5 then we add it to the upper okay then we get 83.5 then we go to the next one 84 minus 0 0.5 will give us what 83.5 and then we add it to 91 that's four so that will give us what 91.5 so that's how to create the class boundaries interesting right now when you take a look at something here you will see that the upper class boundary of the first class becomes the lower class boundary of the second class and the upper of this class becomes the lower in this class the upper of this class also becomes the lower in this class you see that interesting right now let's look at how to find class midpoint so let's create extra column for that now we'll name this place midpoint or class midpoint okay to find a class midpoint this is the formula we are going to use look down now this x subscript m stands for class midpoint okay it should be equal to the lower class boundary plus the upper class boundary all divide by two that's how we are going to get a class midpoint so when we take the first class we add the lower class boundary and the upper class boundary together and divide it by 2. So that will give us 39.5. Then let's look at the next one. So that will be 43.5 plus 51.5 divided by 2. We get 47.5. 
Then we go to the next one. 51.5 plus 59.5 divided by 2 will give us 55.5. Then the next one, 59.5 plus 57.5 divided by 2 will give us 63.5. Then the next one, 67.5 plus 75.5 all divided by 2 will give us 71.5. Then we come to this also, 75.5 plus 83.5 all divided by 2 you get 79.5. Then the last one, 83.5 plus 91.5, all divided by 2, will give us 87.5. So these are the classmate points. Okay. You can also get a classmate point when you add the lower class limit and the upper class limit together and divide by 2. You will still get the same answer. Okay. So let's go to the next one, which is how to find the relative frequency. So to do that, let's add extra columns and then name it relative frequency. Okay. Now to find relative frequency, relative frequency look down should be the frequency of a particular class, the class you are finding the relative frequency for. Okay. The frequency of that class divided by the total frequency. So when we take the first one, what's the frequency of that class? Five, right? So we take and what's the total frequency? We don't know it. Let's add all this. 5 plus 3 plus 8 plus 8 plus 10 plus 11 plus 5. That will give us 50. You see. So the relative frequency of the first class will be 5 divided by 50. And that will give us 1 over 10. And in decimals, it's 0 0.1. Okay. Then we go to the next one. 3 divided by 50. That will give us 0 0.06. Then when we go to the next one, 8 divided by 50. That will give us 0 0.16. Then we go to the next one. The same thing. 8 over 50 will give us 0 0.16. Then the next one, 10 over 50 will give us 1 over 5, which is the same as 0 0.2 in decimals. Okay. And then when we come to this, 11 divided by 50 will give us 0 0.22. Then when we go to the last one, 5 over 50 will give us 0 0.1. So that's how to find a relative frequency. Okay. When you add all the relative frequencies together, you might get one. Okay. Provided you do your approximations well, you will get one. Okay. Then let's go to the next one, which is how to find cumulative frequency. So let's create a new column for this. Then let's name it cumulative frequency. Okay. Now to find cumulative frequency, this is how we are going to do it. Please pay attention. You see the word cumulative. Cumulative is like summing up something from one point to the other. Now for the first class, the cumulative frequency of the first class is going to be the same as the frequency of that class. Okay. The frequency of the first class. So the cumulative frequency of the first class is going to be 5, just like the frequency. Okay. But when we go to the second class, the second class, to get a cumulative frequency of the second class, please pay attention. What you are going to do is you will take, let me say, from the second class downwards. Okay, you add them together, or you can take it from top. Okay, so 5 plus 3. So that's what will give you the cumulative frequency of the second class. You get it. And that will be 8. Okay. Then when we go to the third class, the cumulative frequency of the third class is going to be this 8, which is the frequency of the third class itself, plus the previous classes. You add it to the previous classes. Okay. So 8 plus 3 plus 5 will give you what? That will give you 16. Okay. Then the next one will be 8 plus 8 plus 3 plus 5. Okay. And that will give us what? 24. Then we go to the next one. The next one will be 5 plus 3 plus 8 plus 8 plus 10. You see that? That's the fifth class. So that will give us 34. Then we go to the sixth class. To get a cumulative frequency of the sixth class, we will take the frequency of the sixth class plus the previous plus this plus this plus this plus this. When you add all together, 11 plus 10 plus 8 plus 8, plus 3, plus 5. That should give you 45. Okay. Then, we find the last one also. The last one is going to be 5 plus 11, plus 10, plus 8, plus 8, plus 3, plus 5. And that will give us what? 50. You get it. So, the cumulative frequency of the last class must be the same as the total frequency. Anytime you find cumulative frequency, and the last cumulative frequency is not the same as your total frequency, you should know that you've made a mistake somewhere. So you have to check your calculations again, okay? Another way of doing that is that, remember the cumulative frequency of the first class is the same as the frequency of the first class, right? 
So, to get the cumulative frequency of the second class, you will take the cumulative of first class plus the frequency of second class. That will give you the cumulative frequency of second class. Then for the third class, you get a cumulative frequency of third class. When you take the previous cumulative frequency, which was 8, and you add it to the current frequency, which is 8, you still get a 16. You see that? Also, to get this 24, when you take this 16 plus the frequency of that this class that you are looking at now, which is 8, you get this 24. Also, when you take this 24, okay, which is for the previous class, let's say you want to find a class, and then for the previous, you want to find a fifth class. So for the fourth class, when you take each cumulative frequency, which was 24, and add it to the frequency of the fifth class, which is 10, I will still give you the 34. You see that? Then 34 plus 11 will give you 45. Then this 45 of previous class frequency of current will give you the current cumulative frequency. You see, so that's another way to do it. Then let's look at another thing, which is cumulative unity frequency. So let me draw a new color and then name it cumulative unity frequency. Now, to find cumulative unity frequency, for this also, there are two ways of doing it. Okay. But let me show you the first one. Now, the first one is, you see, the name is cumulative unity frequency. So, the word relative frequency is inside. Okay, so we can use the method used for relative frequency for it. But this time we will target our cumulative frequency. Okay, so we are going to use this formula. Cumulative relative frequency, CRF, okay, is equal to cumulative frequency of that class divided by the total frequency. Now, what is the cumulative frequency of the first class? is 5. And what is total frequency? Five. So, 5 over 5 is divided by 0 0.1, which is the same as the first relative frequency. You see that. Now, when we go to the second class, we we'll take the cumulative frequency of the second class, which is 8, and divide it by total frequency. So 8 over 2 is divided by 0.16. You get it. Then we go to the third one. The cumulative frequency of this class is 16, isn't it? Then we divide it by total frequency. We get 0.32. Then we go to the next one. The cumulative frequency is 24, right? 24 divided by 50 will give us 0.48, isn't it? Then let's go to the next one. What's the cumulative frequency of this class? 34, right? So 34 divided by 50 will give us 0 0.68. Then let's go to the next one. The next one, the cumulative frequency of that class is what? 45, right? When we take 45 divided by total frequency of 50, we will get what? 0 0.9. Then let's go to the last one. The last one, the cumulative frequency of the last class is what? 50, isn't it? When we divide it by the total frequency of 50, we will get what? 1. Now it's important to know that the last cumulative relative frequency is definitely going to be 1. It will be the same as the total relative frequency. Just as we learned that the last cumulative frequency will be the same as the total frequency. So the last cumulative relative frequency will also be the same as the relative frequency. Is that okay? Another way of getting the cumulative relative frequency is by using the relative frequency. How? You see, the first relative frequency will be the same as the first cumulative relative frequency, right? Just as the first cumulative frequency was the same as the first frequency, isn't it? Good. Now, to get the next cumulative relative frequency, you can take the relative frequency of the second class plus the previous. You see how we find the cumulative frequency in it. So 0 0.1, 0 0.06, sorry, 0 0.06 plus 0 0.1. You see that it will give you 0 0.16. Then when we go to the next one, you take the relative frequency of the, of this new class plus the previous, plus this previous also. So 0 0.16 plus 0 0.06 plus 0 0.1 will give you 0 0.32. So when you do that for the others up to the last, you get the same answer, okay? Now, I believe you can confidently find class boundaries, class midpoints, relative frequencies, cumulative frequencies, and cumulative relative frequencies. So in the next tutorial, we'll look at how to prepare charts for numerical data. So it's important to click on like for this video and subscribe to the channel for more tutorials. Thank you and see you in the next tutorial.